All right, so let's finish up our tiling pattern on our curves, and then let's take a look at how we're going to sweep the curves and just make sure every, all the geometry is nice and clean. I'm, I'm gonna actually create some 3D geometry for this, okay? Let's jump back into Houdini. All right, so what I wanna do first is I wanna get these guys overlapping a little bit more there, which is totally easy. Um, and currently, we have this transform node right here being fed into this copy node. This is where we can go and control all that overlapping. All right, so currently I'm using it also to basically control how much of that wrapping or that spiraling amount we have. You know, if we leave it all the way out like this, while you can get some really cool patterns, it's not really, you know, good for a chain link fence. So making this something like 0.2, I think it was, or really close to that. All right, that works kind of well. Let's do 0.5. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. What I want to do is get these guys basically interlocked. All right, so as they spiral around each other, they're spiraling around each other's geometry. All right, so to do that, all I need to do is just add a little bit of X value right here. Very cool. Yeah, so now they're spiraling through each other. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so with that, we now have our pattern. That's tiling. Everything is good to go. Pretty easy. So let's just put this to two, right? Okay, and then what I'm going to do is make another copy, but this one's going to go up in Y. And the reason why I want to do this is because I really just want this center pattern right here. Okay, so we need to basically copy it a few times so I can get this pattern right in here. And the reason why is because when I go to tile it, I want all these guys to line up perfectly. These are where the seams are going to be. Okay. And so let's actually go and these guys are a little bit off from each other. That's the center one there. And we'll have to make some master control for that stuff. Yeah, so these two values basically need to be the same. Cool. So we'll take care of that in just a little bit. Let's actually sweep some geometry around these guys. All right, so what I'm going to do is come down here, create a circle. Nothing complicated here. We're just going to make a circle, and we're going to set it to polygons, and let's just get the sweep set up right away so we can see what size we need our circle to be. So I'm going to come here, sweep that. Awesome. And let's go to our circle now, and let's just make this really tiny, like 0.1 or so. Maybe a little bit less, definitely a little bit less. <laughs> All right, there we go, cool. Look at that, and they're spiraling around each other beautifully. We might have to, you know, adjust it just a little bit more. And really that comes down to aesthetics. All right, so in the sweep, I want to do skin with auto closure. Look at that. Perfect interlocking chain link fence, except for those guys. And the reason why we need to do that is because we haven't joined those curves yet. When they're coming out of this copy here, we still have unfused points. All right, so if we turn on our point display, so we have overlapping points right here. So let's do a fuse. So let's use a fuse and keep its default settings. So that gets rid of the duplicate points there, and then let's just join it so the sweep node has whole primitives to work with. And in this join node, what I need to do is just put it to only connected so it doesn't try to blend it from the end to the, the start of the curve. And with that, if we check out our primnums, we should have just four curves. Perfect. So let's feed that into our sweep now and take a look. Turn off all these guys. Beautiful. We now have a perfectly interlocking chain link fence pattern that tiles. Awesome. So let's go and uh, reverse this guy here. Cool. So with that, I think I'm going to leave you guys there in this lecture. Super quick, super simple, nothing crazy. But these are the general techniques for making these types of patterns. All right. So in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is go and make this whole thing actually tile so we can render it out to a texture. Okay. Thanks so much.